There are at least 26,000 sex workers in Sierra Leone. Their journeys into sex work vary, but what they do have in common is a life characterized by poverty, loss, and abuse. These are their stories. During the war, my mama died, my papa died. So my auntie will be there too. And they tweet me. So my back, I look now, I give up our common streets. Let me take a seat, but I make a seat for our common streets. Because my mama is not there again, papa is not there again. Mama be there, papa be there. But all they can die by the cibola. Pause in order for take care of me. A lot of these women come from poor backgrounds. A lot of them have lost their parents. A lot of them through the war that um, enraged through Australia in 1991 up to 2001. And then again with Ebola in 2014 to 2015. A lot of them lost their parents. And they didn't have family members who were willing to take care of them. So a lot of them have gone into onto the streets because of that. Struggling to take care of themselves, many of these girls took to the streets when they were still underage. 15 years of age, during the world, when I sleep, no people and I die. Mama and Papa, because I have a sister, like Granny, but Mama and Papa with me, Papa and Brother, all people and die. So I've been like 15 years of age, so small. I mean, many self child of the woman from my state. 15 years. But I'm going to take care of me and make her join this team. So nobody gave me a tour. I'm not glad you had to see me compete in the school. When you go around, I won't go to school. We see young girls who have no option but to go into sex work to make, to pay for their school fees, to take care of their families, to take care of their unwanted children that they end up having because of the sex work. We have about 150 around this area. Not here. Yes, here you can have 60 commercial sex workers. And when you walk around the other area, you can have like 60 again. And around the other street, you can have more than 80. Commercial sex worker. we are men in this area. There are no accurate figures as to how many sex workers there are in the country. But organization MOVE has made an estimate that there are 26,000. I can have like tatsy, condom. I cannot do flesh in seats. That's why my body is good to look. I don't have rash, I don't have no scabies. They face really grave dangers. I mean, the first danger is obviously from their clients. Their clients can be brutal to them. They suffer a lot of violence. Their clients also have the ability to give them sexually transmitted diseases. I don't know if this guy is sick, so I don't have to pay money for a little bit. I don't have to pay any two, three days. I don't go to the doctor. Any two, three days. I don't go to the doctor. They check me. I don't take treatment. When I make one police get and then picking there and then teenager there, they call the sickness with the Bokuda Gonoria, that's if you like HIV and the Bokuda, you get some woman and they, middle and leg, and I saw so like Balaga goes to the face, fresh, outside fresh, but middle leg, the like Balaga way pack him. HIV day, Gonoria day, all came bad, bad sickness. Look, this sick way they pass Ebola. You don't know. Maybe then they don't get Ebola, you don't know. You go tamper out, you get. You they die. You left your poor family there. Per month, I buried more than 10 young ladies every month. Most of them died in the middle of the street at night. But we picked most of them in the dustbin. The last time, a lady was dumped in a dustbin by her boyfriend. That time, the ladies not died yet. They died from HIV, they died from coal. That is bronchopneumonia. And most of these, these people that are dying are within the age of 13 to 26 years. As a woman in the streets, I forget about you. But I really left it to survive. If you die now, I hope to. Sex workers often face violence on the streets. And on some occasions, they have been raped and killed and left in the beach areas. We've heard about deaths of commercial sex workers. They've been killed. Some are found dead 
Yeah, especially around Lomley Beach area. We are still waiting to hear from the police, even though some of these dead deaths have taken like two or three years, up to four years, we are still waiting for them. Since we started January, roughly we have I think, at least 15 to 20 of them die from violent death, like rape. I guess that's the man in the way they call me. And they use me and they pay me. For me, and they beat me again. Cause me no type of cause for the way. For some man in the habitual, they can not use you back from between. And they won't do. We talk and take left. So we talk with the chuckle. Sometimes guy they can't take you, say, okay, they go give you 15. Oh, now go, you need give the money, they beat you and use you. Beat you, they pay you, they take all to you and back. For them to report their client that I met with this client, we arranged at a, at, at a particular amount. He didn't give me the money, then he hold me and beat me up. But it's not easy for them to report. I don't know what happened. I think they undergo the beating. However, these women cannot rely on the police for protection and are often targets for police abuse. Well, Advocate is a legal aid organization, so our primary role is to provide uh, paralegal services to these women who come into conflict with the law. So our role is to try and intervene initially at the police station to get them out on bail or to have the charges dropped. But apart from that, we try also to do preventative measures to teach them about their rights. They live in the between the slave day. They live in the between the drug way. The baby is here on 50, 2 quid, 3 quid. Okay. Every day they complain about the police, what the police are doing them when effecting their arrest and even after arresting them in the police station, he said the police are asking for certain amounts of bail because as an ex-officer I know what the police is capable of. I know what the police can do and what they cannot do and in my own work for now bail is free. The police there where they hold, where they kill all we, if we not get money. That's the little to the left way. Or if you get valid, say they pull an hour and or if you get money as the only they begin chance that to you, let they take the money in I am. Police will arrest commercial sex workers and then release them after they've made use of them. Some will even venture to have sex with them and then extort money from them. And that is a human rights violation as well as an abuse. Because they arrest them at a time when they know that they've gathered a lot of money and they will just come and say they are under arrest. The worst thing, we don't come off any money, they also, also, we don't suffer all night. The police don't have all the money, they go to the house, they get to the house. They don't have to eat, nothing. They don't have to eat, they don't have to eat, they don't have to eat anything. They can cost you for money, and they cost you. Or if you don't get money, and they say, they don't go to the house. If you not do and for the day, then they put you inside cell. Most of the crimes that the police have um, levied on these girls has to do with loitering. And our own line of um, concern here, why is the police so keen on the commercial sex workers, the ladies, and they don't go out for, for even the, the, the men who are in the trade as well? Past tense. Follow it again no more. I don't go jail. I don't go born with the kid. They say ah one one bobo they go kill one policeman. So now all the other area they they go get a wall. I think I be there for eight months. Me there. Now I go the tar bone. Side jail. Boy picking up on the side jail. So the very people who they should be able to run to for assistance if something is going wrong are the very ones who also tend to uh, um, commit violence against them. They beat me, they slap, slap, we chair, we close the, you know? Agas me, they agas me, they do all kinds of things to me. Get sex with me, you know? So it's bad, shameful, bad, not fine. When you, when you arrest somebody for loitering, you bring them to the police, why can't you charge them? Rather, you demand for sex. And these are most of the, the, the accusation from, from, from the ladies, that most of the time, the police will demand for sex from them, they will take their monies from them, and it has become a pattern. In September 2016, Advocate brought the allegations to the notice of the police for action. 
advocate intended to bring to our attention some of the stories they have had regarding commercial sex workers encounter with the police. So that we will take a look at it. We are not saying it is true, but in the event it is true, then we need to act more responsibly. The law does not say we protect only the well behaved, even those who misbehave. We still have the responsibility to protect them. Thank you very much. In as much as the Inspector General of Police has said, what we have said are just mere allegations, there's no evidence that they will look into these allegations and do something about it. Because when people say something over and over again, it means there's some truth there. We need further consultation with the police and we engage, we, we map out strategies how to minimize it and handle it in such a way that nobody is being abused that nobody's rights is being violated. If they were really concerned about this illegal activity, they would take further steps when arresting them, maybe to even find ways of getting them off the street, you know, find out why are the young girls on the street and see if there are other alternatives. Involve the Ministry of Social Welfare in, in, in coming up with programs for them, but nothing like that has been done. Many people in Sierra Leone think that commercial sex workers can earn a lot of money or that they enjoy the lifestyle but most of them feel ashamed of the work, and many of them have children and families to support. So leaving the sex trade is difficult. Not to buy which me, which are common as streets. Not to life anyway. But, not so no more after do, because I don't get nobody where they go to. I don't get nothing, I don't get no, nobody where they help me. So I get for do for getting myself, I get for do for pay me ourselves. I get for do for buy for me picking. My mama in a village. My brother and me one. Nobody, my papa don't die. It is a way of livelihood for a number of people in the country. So government has the responsibility, in respect of whatever way it is being viewed, to protect and promote their human rights. And we must be serious to come together and start to address these issues. If we don't come together to address them, then as a country, we start to lose a lot because these are the women and the future of this country. People are facing no more this year. Now, about your streets, I mean, you know, no for sale the whole soon. Women are not so bad, they are so. We cannot go to jail because they can meet me by the shame habit. The future I go bad. So I make if I walk at the lana, but if I not learn, we create for more than me. So we call upon the Ministry of Social Welfare and other organizations that work with social welfare to look into this issue so that they do not continue to engage in sex trade that is so rife with dangers. And it's a multi-sectoral approach. Everybody needs to be involved, the community, the government, and even the women, to say what is needed to get them out of this commercial sex work so that at the end of the day, all citizens of Sri Leone, including sex workers, will be able to contribute to a productive state. When right now the life I live, not to find life. In coming me also not to find life. And the shame to encourage the rich sons are the shame me. A mother, a responsible woman, and all sweet a man in picking. So I feel seen and my own choice then they do something, learn something. No, but not to my choice for going to streets and net can I move to my choice then. Sex work remains illegal in Sierra Leone and it can therefore be difficult to challenge the way these women and girls are being treated in the legal system. There is no easy solution and as long as poverty, abuse and human trafficking continue, women will be forced onto the street. We would like the government to look into the issue of sex work and to meet their international obligation to protect the rights of these vulnerable women and girls. <laughs>